Hello, this is going to be a short video on the small intestine channel. Uh, the small intestine points in particular between 9 and 15. These will go along with the three videos that I will have uploaded for your class. <clears throat> so um, as we know that in general, the small intestine meridian comprises the upper extremity portion of the Taiyang zone, right? The lower portion is the bladder meridian. So on a physical level, the Taiyang enables us to resist the potentially pathogenic climatic factors, wind and cold. And this provides a type of armoring, uh, both physically as well as mentally. So wind represents the unpredictable and ever-changing nature of life. It resonates with the wood element, as you know, in general, and the liver and gallbladder officials in particular. On a human level, uh, wind represents change. It can either inspire us to be flexible and adapt, to what's happening to us in the moment <clears throat> that's probably unpredicted and unforeseen. Or likewise, we can become rigid, more stiff, and this creates stagnation and pain. And as you know, uh, in later conversations that um, you'll have uh, regarding the B syndrome, B obstruction syndrome, which you may have touched upon in some of your earlier courses on the patterns, where there is uh, no free flow or where there's stoppage, there is pain, and where there is no stoppage, where there's free flow, there's, pain, there's no pain, right? There's ease. So <clears throat> in, um, in regards to the Taiyang, we're gonna be looking at mostly like wind and cold thematic uh, factors. So cold represents contraction, concentration, right? Like in the winter time, the earth contracts, becomes more like a seed, right? Everything goes downwards, everything goes inwards. So this obviously resonates with the water element and the kidney and bladder officials. And it stimulates a movement that, again, is downward, inward. And this can either help us conserve our chi and empower introspection and contemplation, or likewise, it could freeze things in place, creating, again, stagnation and pain. <clears throat> so the small intestine points, 9 through 15, they afford us the capacity to ward off these chaotic, confusing um, effects of wind, as well as the fixating effects of cold. So on a psychological and an emotional level, this may be brought about um, as our ability to sort through all of the information and stimulus that helps the heart official to decree what deserves our attention in the moment. Um, and this is supported by the functions of the gallbladder official as well as the triple heater official. And this helps us to make clear decisions and take bold action, as well as maintain harmony with our outer physical and social environment. So the Taiyang meridians, <clears throat> the uh, small intestine and bladder channels, these figure very heavily in our response to psycho-emotional stress and overwhelm. In my experience, in my clinic, uh, almost every single one of my patients who does not practice meditation or get regular exercise is generally pretty unaware of how they hold their stress in their neck, in their upper back, and in their shoulders. So the combination of overstimulation that's giving, having so much information and stimulus to sort through on a daily basis, combined with a, a pretty low grade but pervasive sense of overwhelm due to the, so many of life's obligations, um, which tax our time, our chi, our energy, our money. So these place a tremendous burden on the Taiyang uh, meridians and officials. So, our mind responds as if we're in the presence of wind and cold because these stressors resonate with wind and cold in terms of their energetic nature, right? So it's only our Western mind that makes a difference. But if you really look at the deep energetics between all of those, they're all the same. They just manifest in different ways. And so likewise, the muscles along the small intestine channel and the bladder channel in our upper torso and upper neck and lower neck they tighten up, they get stiff, they get tense, which obstructs the flow of chi and blood, which eventually leads to pain. So if we become too overwhelmed um, by all the things that we need to pay attention to and all of the obligations required of us, you know, we can become stuck, we can become frozen, we can become unable to cope. So one of the severe ways this shows up is frozen shoulder. So in treating points uh, and choosing the points between 9 and 15, palpation figures extremely heavily 
in my point selection. So probably more than any other points on small intestine, I think small intestine nine through 15 relate to the sinew meridian the most, the small intestine sinew meridian. Now you're gonna learn more about the different collateral vessels of which the sinew meridian is one of them. But uh, these points um, very heavily relate to the small intestine sinew meridian. And the sinew meridian is tested because of its ability to afford us the, the capacity to extend. And we talked about that in, uh, and you heard me talk about that in the prior videos. So this collateral meridian enables us to engage our muscles in order to extend our arm outwards towards where our heart wants for us, towards what our heart wants for us, okay? So let's start briefly with small intestine nine, true shoulder, Jan Zen, which is also called upright shoulder or shoulder integrity, also known as shoulder divination. So what that's referring to is uh, in ye old times, they use the scapula bones of oxen and other large mammals um, to inscribe and use as oracle bones, right? They would uh, inscribe these different symbols on these, uh, the scapula bones um, of oxen and other large animals. And they would use this in uh, practices of divination, right? So um, <clears throat> in a similar way, you could say metaphorically, and, and Lonnie Jarrett touches upon this, is you know, when you're starting to open up the shoulder, right? This is where we leave small intestine eight, and now we're on the border between the extremity and the torso. That implies an inward, an even further inward movement, an even greater inward movement from small intestine eight, the hussy point, right? Which is all about uniting within, going down deep, the cheap plunges more deeply, both literally and figuratively. So now this is the part where, the area where um, the extremity meets the torso. So this is where intention starts to begin to move from our heart and then uh, extend through the extremities, right? So now this is where we're actually not just thinking about something or holding it in our heart. This is what begins that motion of activation, right? When we start to manifest the heart's desires by extending out into the world to grasp something, to reach out towards something, okay? So this also implies at this level, the beginnings of a process of greater intuition. It's no longer reactive, right? Taiyang is the outermost zone, right? That's about our uh, momentary reactions that may not be conscious. So for example, if I'm experiencing a, you know, a breeze or a cold wind, uh, something harassing the exterior, right? I'm going to reflexively tighten up. I may even start to shiver a little bit in a very small, subtle level, a small, subtle way that I'm not aware of, right? <clears throat> um, and that uh, subconsciously gives me the capacity to armor myself. Like, I don't have to think about that. That's, that's just reactive. That's like the animal reaction that my body has. But now we're beginning to imply a deeper level of intuition. So I think that that's what this divination um, aspect might have that sort of dual um, meaning, right? So one is about how these, um, how these bones were used in ancient divination. And that also as the small intestine, the yang aspect of the uh, yin heart, right, which is all about the heart mind housing the shen and the small intestine official being its closest uh, minister, right? This is about that first step of bringing the heart's decree out into the world, right? So um, the jian zen, is, the zen is the upright, jian is shoulder, so this is referring to something upright. So it allows us to hold the upper body upright. It also allows us to hold our shoulders upright. And this scapula, actually at the base of the scapula, it's not quite at the level of the scapula yet. <clears throat> it's about one sun from uh, the axilla. Um, <clears throat> this allows us to maintain a more upright posture, okay? As well as a subtle implication that, you know, when our intuition, our inner guidance is in alignment with our desires that lead us to move out into the world in a very specific way. When they're aligned, our, our heart spirit is upright. <clears throat> um, small intestine 10, the shoulder plate shoe, right? This is also known as scapula's hollow. Um, this now is uh, just under, um, where that joint is 
maybe like even close to the joint space where the humerus and the acromion and the clavicle all meet. And there's a nice little depression like right under uh, the, um, the acromion and that humeral uh, corner. And this is actually um, just above what's called the motor point for the teres and uh, minor muscle, right? So halfway between small intestine nine and 10 is the teres minor muscle motor point. Um, and this actually allows us to keep the humerus in place, as well as to allow us to externally and laterally rotate the humerus, as well as adduction to bring the arm back in towards the body to bring something back in, right? So our intuition has moved us to move out in a certain way to grasp something and then bring it back to us towards the heart. So the implications for this point, which again lies at the corner of the acromion and the scapular spine, are that it empowers stability regarding our shoulds and shouldn'ts, right? Think about the shoulder, right? It's how we carry our burdens. And there's a lot to our shoulds and shouldn'ts. Um, this is the aspect of our conditioned way of being that we've learned from the people that had influence over us as children in our formative years as teenagers, right? So these are the main inspirations that you've maintained that give you a sense of like how to be in the world, right? Which then is juxtaposed on top of uh, the heart's natural, spontaneous, almost childlike capacity to be in the world in a very open way, in a very present way, and also in a very vulnerable way. So when we experience some kind of heart shock, heart pain, heart discomfort, maybe we weren't received in the way we would have liked, we didn't receive that warmth uh, in all situations, so some parts of us start to shut down, um, then the small intestine starts to come into play. And that that role extends even further in terms of protection, in terms of the pericardium and the triple heater, which we'll discuss later. But that first level of is, is, is it okay for me to radiate the natural impulses of who I am out into the world in a natural unconscious way and experience the lightness of being? So obviously we don't always get all of that as, uh, as children and teenagers. So some part of us starts to uh, get distorted or twisted in our interpretation, either of our own Im uh, impulses, our own desires, our own um, natural ways of being, as well as other people and how they receive us, right? So what results is on some level, to some degree, to varying degrees among the patients, um, your patients are going to become confused about what they should do or how they should do it. Um, and so they become to some degree uh, overwhelmed and confused. And at some point, maybe if it's very severe, even like frozen in place, they can't take action. So with greater chi and blood flow through this area, they're more free to proceed along the path, the life path that's right for them, unburdened by the judgments of others. All right. So with small intestine 11, heavenly ancestor, uh, celestial gathering, um, J.R. Worsley said that this point is the strongest mental level point there is on a small intestine meridian. So it can be used when the patient isn't quite ready for a window of the sky point, and I will um, describe those in a later uh, lecture. Um, but they have a lot to do with um, uh, connecting uh, our brain mind with our heart mind, right? Opening it, ourselves up to experience freedom from the prison of our conditioning. Right? So these are special points that are around the head and the neck, and we'll describe those later. But he said, aside from those, this is one of the strongest mental level points on the small intestine meridian, and it helps support our ability to sort when um, the patient's mind is kind of clogged up. Right? Again, small intestine has a lot to do with turbidity right? uh, on um, the physical level right? and how it deals with the fluids that it receives from the stomach. Um, and it actually that turbidity is useful because the you know as the small intestine sorts the clear from the turbid the turbid is then used to make our wei chi so in a way that's useful in terms of our defensive chi our immune system so you know i don't like the way it's described as impure because that makes it sound like it's not useful but this isn't like chi that's you know like a waste product that needs to be uh, gotten rid of it just it can't be um, it has to be in the appropriate quantity and place in the right time in order to be extremely useful, right? 
So, you know, every medicine has its dosage and our medicine of turbid chi is just the amount that we need to support the full functioning of our immune system. So <clears throat> oftentimes we can't sort out who we are from our family or our lineage to really discern our unique purpose, which is held in the heart and communicates that with the liver to make their life's plans or our life purpose uh, known to us. So we often look heavenward to our ancestors who are no longer encumbered or bound to earthly needs and desires, you know, because they've deceased. They don't have a body they have to busy themselves taking care of. They're just spirit now. So we can turn to them um, to get a better insight and guidance and understanding. And, um, you know, this in a way lives as the light of our own intuition. So when we are, again, overstressed, uh, this is a, a, an area that can become very tense and tight. Um, it's in the infraspinatus muscle, right? Right, sort of in that uh, third of the way down from the scapular spine towards the bottom and halfway in between. And this is a really wonderful point to massage a needle or put moxa on the needle. Very powerful point. Um, this is a great point for people who store a lot of their stress in their neck and upper back. And again, all of these points from nine to 15 are great for that. So what do I do? I palpate to see which one is the most assure. Ooh, that's it. Yes, like the patient responds. Or maybe I feel something particularly unique about this point under my own fingertips, and I feel drawn or called to treat this point. So small intestine 12, grasping the wind, bing fung. Um, again, windum, wind, random, it's uh, quick to change, right? That's its nature. And this can be disorienting to the senses as well as the spirit, right? As I mentioned before, wind represents change and pain represents an opportunity to change and be more flexible, both of body and mind. Maybe I'm not doing something with my body or in a certain way, and that needs to change. I'm not doing, I'm not working my body the right way, or I'm working it too hard or too repetitively, right? Or mentally, uh, there's a way I'm, you know, perceiving the world, I'm thinking about things um, that really isn't in accordance with my deep nature that creates some kind of conflict, again, that relates to the wood, that stirs up wind, and that creates stiffness and stress and pain. Uh, small intestine 12 is right in the center of the supraspinatus muscle and is also the motor point for the supraspinatus muscle. I'll talk more about motor points later. But basically, a motor point um, activates the motor nerve that uh, feeds into and innervates that particular muscle. So it's helping to interrupt that pain signal that's moving back and forth between that muscle and the brain, the central nervous system, and now affords us to experience a more pure message from the brain. And that message now is no longer tighten up, contract, stiffen, right? Activate. It now allows that muscle to relax because it's interrupting those pain signals or um, those activation signals from the central nervous system. So grasping the wind, it actually allows us to, uh, ironically and then therapeutically, instead of being um, at the mercy of the wind where this space is grasping the wind, and holding on to it in a way that becomes pathological. This actually allows us to take effective action and grasp the wind as in we can embrace our change consciously by choice, right? So when we embrace life's changing circumstances, right? Um, when we can embrace the present moment and not just be stuck in our old picture of it's good, it's bad, it should be this way, it shouldn't be that way. That affords us more flexibility and then more ease, and then the body can relax. So small intestine 13, crooked wall. Um, this is like right on the uh, superior medial corner of the scapula. It's tucked under the scapular spine, just lateral to the medial border of the scap at about the same level as bladder 12, wind gate, right? So you can often get a sense of what a point does by virtue of the other points in the anatomical neighborhood. So classically, this is indicated for soothing the sinews and quickening the blood. So what does that mean? That means it dispels the pathogenic factors of wind and cold that can lodge in the nooks and crannies of the uh, scapular region, and these stagnate the chi and blood. So this interferes with the free movement of the muscles and the tendons. And the crevices in the corners are where chi can get stuck. Think about it like um, when you're cleaning your house, and you look in the corners uh, and stuck in there, that's where like the little dust bunnies accumulate, right? That's where the 
sort of weird lint and detritus, that all kind of gets stuck there because there's not easy, smooth flow of chi. And remember, acupuncture is really, in a way, rectifying the um, feng shui of the body, right? So, uh, you know, our path through life is uh, not always simple, not always easy, not always clear. You know, straight paths are very simple, but, you know, very <laughs> rarely does our life work like that, right? Um, crooked paths are dynamic, and that really mimics our life. So if you look at the, the flow of the small intestine meridian, you know, it comes up from 9 to 10, then down to 11, then up to 12, then down to 13, and then over to 14, and then up to 15, right? So this is a crooked path. So crooked paths are dynamic. And dynamic paths, dynamic lives, right, uh, dynamic circumstances allow us to feel more vital, right? Because if we're just kind of cruising along, like if you've ever driven across the Midwest, as beautiful as it is, you know, when you're driving through Kansas or Nebraska, I mean, it's just this straight road that just goes on and on. It just, there's no, there's nothing that changes, right? So in a way, our minds, our, our small mind doesn't like change because it doesn't like uncertainty and unknown future. But if you think about it, if everything were the same all the time, I mean, that'd be a nightmare of a life, right? So this reminds us that the ancients understood that our path through life, it zigs and zags. It's always changing, sometimes just a little, sometimes a great deal. But our journey um, may take us down a bit sometimes in a way that our mind says, oh, I'm going down, right? Oh, I prefer to be going up, maybe even backwards. But that does not mean we're not progressing. Just like a river with lots of twists and turns and bends, um, that doesn't mean we're not moving forward. Again, it just means that we're not moving in a straight line the way our small mind uh, finds comfortable. So just a few more. Small intestine 14, outer bladder, excuse me, outer shoulder shoe, right? So as a shoe point, uh, this moves chi through the shoulder and the scapular area, similar to small intestine 13. It really helps us sort out what's best for us. And at the same level of GV13, kiln path, and bladder 11, great shuttle, both of these summon the resources of the Yang Chi and the Wei Chi, respectively, to navigate the challenges um, that are represented by wind, wind cold, and wind heat, and allow us to remain strong and flexible and clear in our mind and our spirit, and connected to the heavens, right, which is represented on earth by our heart. So this is very helpful for invigorating the blood and the Yang Chi to expel the wind and the cold that plagues us, especially the aged, right, and uh, helps us to deal with external pathogenic born B obstruction syndrome. So B obstruction just means that the chi and blood is obstructed and stagnating because of some pathogenic factor, such as a climatic factor, wind, cold, damp, uh, heat, right? And this is what over time um, interferes with the creation of the blood. And then we have a blood deficiency uh, condition and that becomes arthritis uh, or bursitis. So lastly, small intestine 15, central shoulder shoe. This is similar to 14. It enhances the flexibility, eases pain, especially that's induced by stress, right? It's um, level with GV14, great hammer. And in a similar way, it kind of shakes up uh, the chi to protect us, uh, to keep us moving by ensuring our flexibility and responsiveness, not just our reactivity, right? So we don't want to just be moving through life like instinctive animals, right? We wanna be connected to our heart. We wanna be connected to our heart's guidance and our intuition. That's what elevates us. And that's what helps us to experience um, a more elevated sense of vitality, right? So this is also said to be great for invigorating the blood. And according to the Ling Shu, it's said to subdue wind by treating blood, right? Um, and that's a general treatment principle that's in the Ling Shu. If you want to expel wind, you have to invigorate blood. And so at this level, where cold is often involved, this really helps to activate both uh, the chi and the blood to uh, warm the cold, uh, to move the chi and the blood, and expel the wind. 